Hi, you may recall that the last uh, video that I did was on a finish fidget spinner and the objective there was to take one of these things and to see if we could get it up to 5,000 RPM and we did. Uh, what I didn't spend too much time on and what I'd like to do in this video is talk about how did I determine that it was actually going 5,000 RPM. Well here we have one of the sample uh, fidget spinners that we used in the prior video what I'd like to do now is to switch over to my cell phone so that I can give a little bit closer uh, view of what we're talking about. Uh, obviously the fidget spinner itself is spinning here. It's got magnets on each of the lobes. There is a single coil down here. There is a, a circuit board with an Arduino and an H-bridge here. You may recall that the Arduino can have the H-bridge send either positive uh, to one side of the uh, coil and negative to the other or vice versa to change the north and south poles so that sometimes the coil is pushing sometimes it's pulling and back here we have one of the more important parts this is an infrared emitter detector pair that is set up right underneath the armature so that every time the arm goes by one of those three arms it bounces back a little bit of infrared energy which the uh, the sensor detects and sends that to the uh, Arduino. Now the simplest way for to determine how fast this thing is spinning is to measure those pulses that are coming out of the infrared emitter detector. And what I've done here is to extend this yellow wire from the point where that connects to the Arduino and I've connected that up to both my oscilloscope and my bench, uh, bench uh, multimeter. Before we go there, I'd like to show you, this is the uh, bench power supply that I'm using. It's putting out 8 volts, and the system's drawing about 1.7, 1.65 uh, milliamps. Over here on the, uh, the multimeter, it's set to measure frequency, and you can see that it's showing about 132. It sometimes bounces up to 138, but you can ignore that. That's just some noise getting into the system. About 132 uh, hertz, and down here on the oscilloscope, whoop, you're seeing a nice square wave showing that part of the time uh, it's positive and part of the time it's off and the frequency is pretty solid at 133, 132 hertz. Now that's a very straightforward way of measuring the speed of the Arduino but you're actually using part of the system uh, to do the measuring. What I'd like to show you here is a way of completely independently measuring that by taking another one of the infrared emitter detector devices and I'm going to slide it in from the side and put it right underneath the arm of the Arduino or rather of the uh, fidget spinner calling it an Arduino instead of a fidget spinner let me get that just a little bit higher and you don't want to let it hit the bolts because obviously that's going to do a little bit of damage to it. And now I'm going to go over to a really small oscilloscope and hopefully you can see on there again we've got a square wave it's not quite as uh, symmetrical as it was on the other one because I've got the, uh, the sensor placed a little differently but down in the bottom right hand area you'll see the frequency let me see if I can sneak over that, is about 130 um, hertz and that's the same thing that I'm getting right now both on the uh, oscilloscope and on the multi uh, meter set to measure frequency. So that's one of the ways that you can measure with an external device the spinning speed of the Arduino. Now, what I'd like to do now is take a look at another completely independent way of measuring the speed of rotation of the fidget spinner what I've done is to build what's called a tachometer, which is a speed measuring device. This one happens to be made up of a two-line liquid crystal display here on the front. You can see the back of it there that connects to... This is just an old circuit board that I was using for a different project. It holds an Arduino Pro Mini, a voltage regulator that allows me to run it off of more than 5 volts. And there are three wires that go out to a sensor. Now, I could use the same infrared emitter detector sensor that I was using uh, before but I decided to build up something a little more sophisticated this sensor is made up of a couple of primary parts the most important one is this this is a small laser uh, this is about half the size of the end of a, of a pencil where the eraser resides 
and I've got that laser sitting up here and it's aimed down at a one inch mirror. This is a craft mirror you can buy at a, at a craft store. And that laser beam bounces off of the mirror, goes up and you can see it. If I block this, you can see the laser going on and off at the top, at least hopefully you can. There's a little hole in a piece of brass there and that allows the laser beam to go through and fall upon this device, which is a phototransistor. As its name implies, a phototransistor is a transistor that turns on and off based on light. And because it's connected in such a way that uh, the, the beam is broken, every time the beam breaks, a pulse is sent out to the Arduino. The Arduino does a little bit of computation to determine how long that took and it will display on here the speed in revolutions per minute. Now I'm going to fire my phone up again and give you a close-up of the things that we just talked about so that you can see that a little bit more clearly. All right, let me start the recorder. All right, so here we have the, the liquid crystal display. If I turn this around, again, you can see the Arduino, the connections, very simple schematic. You'll find that on my webpage at trainelectronics.com. But the important thing is right here and hopefully you can see both the laser and if I block that laser you'll see the beam that's reflected being blocked from that little hole where the phototransistor sits on top of that. So that's the whole thing. We've got a laser pointing straight down bouncing off the mirror going up to the phototransistor. Now if I take this and slide it in and stick it to the edge of that you'll see that the liquid crystal display tells us it's about 2470 revolutions per minute now if I go over to the oscilloscope you'll see that the frequency is 123 Hertz also up here even though it's getting me some bad readings it usually is at 123 go back to this one if you multiply 123 Hertz times 20 I think you'll find that you get something very close to the 2470 revolutions per minute that's shown here. So another completely independent of the, uh, the fidget spinner way to determine how fast it's traveling. I hope this has been of some value to you, some interest. If so, make sure you check the thumbs up down below and leave any comments there. And uh, we'll see you next time.